Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is uh, good to be here with you. I'm a little bit uh, jet lagged uh, coming from California. We got up at three o'clock this morning and could not go back to sleep. And like, I don't know what, what's the matter with the sun over here, but it, you know, <laughs> rises very early. And uh, I think it was <coughs> nine o'clock last night, we were walking back and we were like, wait a minute, it's nine o'clock and the sun has not set. So anyway, uh, we are trying to kind of uh, get on this schedule here. So um, anyway, we are glad to be here, and uh, I believe that God has a blessing in store for us uh, throughout this week. So uh, did you bring your Bibles? Very good, because we are going to be using them, and um, we have a uh, um, we're going to pray that the Lord will do something mighty here throughout this week. Amen? Amen. All right, so with, with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, I'm going to have a quick word of prayer, and uh, then we'll begin. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to ask in a special way that uh, you would um, speak to us, Lord. Father, that you would open our eyes, that you would give us understanding um, thank you, Lord, for what you will do, because we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, um, turn with me in your Bibles if you have them. If you, if you don't have your Bibles and you have a cell phone, please you, use that. Revelation chapter 10. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 10. And uh, we're going to look at verses 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 10. John here is, is in vision, and he is speaking with an angel. And the Bible says in verse 9, Revelation chapter 10, verse 9, um, And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. Now let me give you a little bit of context here. Uh, the angel has just told him uh, that this book that he sees in the hand of the angel, he is to take and to eat it. He is to take and to eat it. So the Bible says, now John goes to the angel, takes the book, says, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take, eat, take and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as what? Honey. honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said, unto, he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So I have a question for you. How many of you like uh, sweet stuff? Okay. Um, if I told you that I'm going to give you something to eat and it's going to make your belly bitter, how many of you would eat it? Right, that would be a big turnoff, wouldn't it? You'd be like, I don't want to eat that because you just told me it's going to make my belly bitter. But let me suggest something to you. John, the reason he takes this book is because God is telling him, look, it's going to be bitter in your belly, but it's going to be sweet in your mouth. And I want to suggest to you that it was the sweetness of the book that even led John to the risk of having a bitter experience. Does that, does that make sense? In other words, let me see if I can rephrase it. What is the book that the angel holds? It's actually the Bible. And <clears throat> the Bible is a sweet thing. It should be so sweet to us that we are willing to experience bitter things in order to get the sweet thing. Amen? So, so let me even say it this way. What keeps us when times get hard? You know, anyone ever have like bitter times? Hard? What keeps us when times get hard? It's the sweetness of the word of God. The word of God is designed to keep us in hard times, to keep us when things get bitter. All right, I'm setting the foundation here. Did the disciples have a bitter experience? Yeah, you know what that bitter experience was? What was the bitter experience the disciples had? The death of 
Jesus, that was pretty bitter. Would you agree? Come back with me. Let's look at that story. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. You know, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every what? Word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Bible says in Psalms 119, 103, how sweet are thy words to my, t- to my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. The word of God is to be like honey to us. Amen? Wow, that amen sounded really, really weak. The word of God is to be like honey to us. Amen? Amen. 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 So look at what happens here. In Luke chapter 24, the disciples <clears throat> have... have just experienced something very bitter. It is the death of Jesus. Luke 24, um, and, and I want you to notice verse 13. Luke 24, verse 13. The Bible says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holden that they should, what, should not what? Know him. All right, so catch this, okay? Uh, are the disciples discouraged? Have they just had a bitter experience? Okay, and so now you got two of these disciples there walking, walking on the road to this road to Emmaus, and then the Bible says that Jesus draws near, but they don't know it's him. Their eyes were holding so that they could not recognize him. And so uh, Jesus asked them, hey, what is this? Look at verse 17. It says, he said unto them, what manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, what things? And they begin to tell Jesus, all the reasons they have to be discouraged. I have a question for you. Have you ever told Jesus all the reasons that you have to be discouraged? <laughs> have you ever gone down the list? If anyone had a reason to be discouraged, who was it? These disciples who had just lost the one that they thought was the Savior. And so they're going on and telling Jesus all these things. Remember, they do not know it's him. Now notice with me verse 25. Then he, that is Jesus, said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Okay, just pause for a moment. How many of you have ever lost a loved one? And in that moment of losing that loved one, um, the last thing that you would probably want someone to do for you is to give you a Bible study. I want you to think about this. Jesus wants his disciples to be happy. Is that right? Because Jesus always wants us to be happy, amen? He wants us to to be peaceful. He wants us to have a surety. He wants us to be joyous. So if you, let's say that you had somehow died, and then by a miracle came back to life. You know that your family is discouraged. Your friends are sad because they're like, you know, our beloved is gone. You know, if you came back to life, what's, what's the first thing you would do? Some of you are having like really bad thoughts right now, right? <laughs> but think about it. What would you do? You knew your mom, your dad, your, your spouse, your son, your daughter was mourning you, what would you do? You would simply say, hey, guys, look, stop mourning. Here I am. Jesus doesn't do that. He gives them a Bible study. You all don't look excited. He gives them a Bible study. I mean, think about that now. Let me read on because notice what it says here. Uh, verse, verse 27, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Stop for a second. Have you ever, like, been studying the Bible and you suddenly see something that you never saw before? How'd that make you feel? Were you kind of like, oh, wow. Yeah? 
Was it kind of like that experience of, whoa, I, saw, I just discovered something I have never seen before, and this is like mind-blowing? Listen, how much would you give? How much would you have given to be at that Bible study where Jesus is going back into the Old Testament and beginning to break down the scriptures, familiar verses and texts that they had read maybe dozens and dozens of times where Jesus is now saying, hey, guess what? This was talking about the Messiah, and this was talking about the Messiah, and they're having these aha moments. Remember, they are depressed because the one whom they believed was the Messiah was dead. And here comes this man giving them a Bible study, and I want you to notice the response. Check this out. In, in verse 28, it says, And as they drew nigh and went into the village, whither they went, he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave to them. And their eyes were what? Opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. When did they recognize Jesus? When he what? When he broke what? When he broke bread. When he broke bread. When he, okay. <laughs> when he broke bread. When he broke bread. It was in the breaking of bread that their eyes were open and they saw Jesus. Now, what was the response? Notice what it says next. Verse 31. Verse 32. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? Let me ask again. How many of you ever lost a loved one? When you lose a loved one, is there anything, is, can you think of anything that would make your heart burn in that moment? I, I can't think of much. But this Bible study was so deep that the disciples momentarily forgot their sorrows. Think about that. Think about that. What kind of Bible study must that have been? If Jesus goes back into the Old Testament and begins to break down scriptures and begins to say, hey, listen, this was talking about me. You know what? Let me tell you, I believe that Jesus is all over the scriptures. No, I mean, I believe that Jesus is all over the scriptures. Yeah, you still don't look convinced. I believe that Jesus is all over the scriptures. If you go back to Genesis chapter 1, the Bible tells you, you, need, you don't need to turn here, we'll just, just, just listen. The Bible tells us um, that um, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep. And then God said what? Let there be light. Do you know that Jesus is the light of the world? You know, on day two, when God brings the water to prominence, do you know that Jesus is called the water of life? On day three, the Bible says, check this out. <laughs> on day three, the Bible says that um, the first fruits came up out of the ground. <laughs> uh, on day three, uh, let me rephrase it. On the third day, the first fruits came up. Don't make me get excited all by myself up in this place right now. On day three, the, the first fruits, on the third day, the first fruits came up out of the ground. You realize that Jesus Christ is the first fruits who was raised out of the ground on the third day. On day four, the Bible talks about the son, of, the son coming into existence. You realize that Jesus Christ is the son of righteousness. On day five, the Bible says he created the fish and the birds. You realize Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. On day six, the Bible says that God created man in his image. Ooh, you realize that Jesus Christ is the image of his father. And on day seven, the Bible says that God rested. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you Rest. In other words, beloved, in just Genesis 1 and 2 alone, you find Jesus and pictures of him all through, this, all through 
those two chapters. We can go back. Let's go, let, let's, let's go back and do this again. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the center of all scriptures. The Bible says, search the scriptures for these are they which do what? Testify of me. Every time you read the Bible, guess who you should be looking for? Jesus. You should be looking for Jesus. Because when you look for Jesus, what happens is that your heart begins to burn when you find him. So how many of you want heartburn? Come on. Uh, that's what the gospel does. It, it sets the heart on fire. So I want you to check this out because we're, we're going somewhere with this. And believe it or not, I'm just setting the foundation right now. Because what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you who you are. And I'm going to show you what your mission is as God's people. And I'm going to show you why it is so important that you understand the message that God has given us for such a time as this. But come, let me show you some more things real quick. And that, is this honey? Anyone, ha anyone have any honey just now? This is honey, right? It, this is the word of God. The word of God is sweet to the taste. And when we begin to experience that sweetness, let me tell you, it does something that allows us to live through the bitter times in our lives. Amen? Come. Uh, in Genesis chapters 1 through 5, the main character of those chapters is Adam. Do you realize that Jesus Christ is called the second Adam? And, and, and just as Adam himself was put to sleep and his side was opened up so that his bride came forth from his side, you realize that Jesus Christ, the second Adam, was put to sleep on the cross and his side opened up from which came forth the New Testament church, his bride? The, the main f figures uh, uh, from Genesis 6 to 11 is a man named Noah. Noah, don't mind me as I get excited all by myself for a second. Noah is a man who, who was lifted up on wood above the earth. <laughs> In the days of Noah, salvation came through wood that was lifted up <laughs> above the earth. You realize that Jesus Christ is that second Noah who himself was lifted up above the earth and said, I, if I be lifted up, I will do what? Draw all men unto me. The next major figure in the book of Genesis is Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 to 20, Abraham was sent into a strange land to a home that was not his own to be a wanderer. You realize that Jesus Christ is the second Abraham who was sent out into a strange place, this earth, not having a home of his own. After Abraham, you have uh, Genesis chapter 21 to 25, which is covering the story of Isaac. And you know, you know what happened with Isaac, right? Abraham says, God tells Abraham to take your son, your only son. And he shows him the mountain upon which he was to be sacrificed. And, and, and then by the grace of God, you know, there was a ram in the thicket. But you realize that Isaac, that Jesus Christ is that second Isaac. And then you have the story of Jacob. Jacob who gained the birthright over his twin brother Esau. Why did Esau lose a birthright? He gave it up for? For food. He gave it up for food. So you say, Pastor, like, does Jesus have a twin? <laughs> you heard me earlier say that Jesus is the second Adam. Well, what happened to the first Adam? He gave up his birthright. Over what? <laughs> Over food. So Jesus becomes that second Adam. He becomes that Jacob, if you will. Uh, he is the one who regains the birthright that was lost by the first Adam. And then there is Joseph, who was betrayed by his own sent to prison even though he was innocent, was placed between two criminals, <laughs> a butler and a baker, <laughs> both having dreams having to do with three 
days. You guys, <laughs> I'm talking about honey. <laughs> the word of God is like honey. It is sweet to our taste. And so once we begin to realize, beloved, that, 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 that our, our Christ is all over the scriptures, it does something to help us as a church understand our identity. See, I want to talk to you about Joseph a little bit. You remember that Joseph had been, how can I say this? Do you remember how Joseph, in actuality, had been sent ahead by his brothers? He was sent ahead to prepare a place for them. Was he? Was he sent ahead to prepare a place for his brethren? Yeah, he was. And, and, and so he goes ahead. Now, they meant it for evil, but God meant it for, for good. So he's sent away to prepare a place for them. Um, and th but then the Bible lets us know that, that when the brothers finally come back to Joseph, like before they could enter the place that he had prepared for them. Remember, they, wait, wait. They come before Joseph, their brother, but they do not know it is him. Why did, they go, why did they go before Joseph? What were they trying to get? Okay, give me a specific food. Bread. Okay. They go looking for bread. There was a famine in the land. Is that right? So they're going looking for bread, and they see Joseph, but they don't know it's him. Just like the disciples on the road to Emmaus did not know that it was Jesus. So they're talking to Joseph, and they don't realize it's him. Uh, and, but, but check this out. Here's what I'm trying to get at. Before they could enter the place which Joseph had been sent ahead to prepare for them, Joseph had to investigate. <laughs> Whether they had changed or not. Do, do you catch what I'm saying? So Joseph's like, okay, I'm going to see. H how is he going to investigate them? How is he going to test whether they have changed or not? You remember the story, right? So what happens is um, uh, Benjamin, who is the youngest, right? Uh, he says, I'm taking Benjamin. And how do the, how do the, the brothers respond? No. Nah. Mm -mm. You're, you're not... That's not going to happen. Take one of us. You're not taking Benjamin. <laughs> Who is Benjamin? He was the youngest or the least, you would say? The least of the brethren? The least of his brethren? That's what you would say? Okay, all right. So Benjamin was the least of his brethren. Here's what Joseph wanted to see. Hmm, let me see how you treat the least of these, my brethren. Because how you treat the least of these, my brethren, will be how you would treat me. You see, beloved, who would have thought that in the story of Joseph, you have a snapshot of the landmark doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist church, the investigative judgment? Who would have thought that? God is trying to let us know, listen, guys, you have not believed cunningly devised fables these stories in the bible are given to you yes they really happened but it's not just a historical account god is trying to reaffirm your faith you know why because many of you are struggling with your faith right now you're not sure what you believe you're not even sure why you believe it you just know i'm a seven-day adventist because i was born as such and god is trying to i believe god's trying to wake his people up because i truly believe that the end is near. I believe the end is coming. I have a sermon about that that's coming up, so just don't, don't you know, think anything, oh, we've heard that all. Just hold on. But I want you to check this out. Look, because <laughs> there's something else about Joseph that we need to know. I want you to come with me. Genesis 37. We're going to go deeper into the story of Joseph, and I want you to watch this. Genesis chapter 37 um, beginning with verse 1 and 2. When you get there, say amen. Genesis 37. Are you there? 
Genesis 37, 1 and 2. The Bible says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. They, these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, and feeding the flock, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and with the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and made him a coat of many colors. All right, how many people in this story? It's Joseph and his, his brothers, right? Okay, so. Joseph and his brothers... Who is their father? Who is their father? Oh, you can say it louder. It's, it's Jacob, okay? Who are their mothers? Okay. So did, did the brothers and Joseph all have the same father? But, but his brothers had a, another mother. So these were brothers from another mother. But they all had the same father. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So, so, they all have the same father. Are you with me? But they are brothers from another mother. Another mother. <laughs> okay, all right, you'll, you'll get it, you'll get it, all right. So, uh, uh, let's talk about these brothers. Let me ask you a question. Did the brothers from another mother hate Joseph? They did. Is that right? And, and we're going to find the reason why they hated Joseph. And, and it's very simple. Uh, uh, verse 4, the Bible says, And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Okay, let me give you two reasons right, right here. Now, the Bible says that Joseph brought the evil report against his brothers. What does that mean about Joseph? He was good, which means what? That he, he was righteous and he must have what? Kept his father's commandments. All right, so the brothers from another mother, who all have the same father but a different mother, hated Joseph because he kept his father's commandments. Is that right? Okay, so check this. The brothers from another mother hate Joseph, number one, because he keeps the commandments. But wait. Look at the next verse. Verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him the more. What kind of dream did Joseph dream? How many of you remember the dream? Right? That they were all going to come and they were going to bring their sheaves to his. So they, the, the 11, were going to bring their sheaves to him. So, what kind of dream is this? What would you call this? Pro prophecy. So, did Joseph have the gift of prophecy? Okay. So, they hated Joseph. Because he kept the commandments and had the gift of prophecy. <laughs> Look at my eyes, guys. Look at my eyes. Joseph had brothers from another mother who hated him because he kept the commandments and had the spirit of prophecy. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> are, are, you, are you getting an idea of your identity? Okay, they also hated him because it appeared that the father liked him more than the others. Like he was the favorite. Verse 12, after he has dreamed the dreams, the dreams, 
The Bible says, and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, here am I. So watch this. The father is concerned about the brothers from another mother. <laughs> because he loves them. You guys look like you're following me. <laughs> you have, see you're going like this, like, hmm, I like that. <laughs> He, he loves the brothers from another mother. Like, the brothers got it all confused. They think, oh, you know what, like, Joseph, I mean, uh, Jacob really likes Joseph. He doesn't really like us. He doesn't care about us. But that's not true. In fact, the father loved the brothers so much that he was willing to send Joseph, whom he loved, to check on them because he wanted to see about their welfare. He loved them. But they didn't understand that. So anyway, the father says, Joseph, I am calling you to go check on your brothers from another mother. <laughs> Anybody's heart feeling hot like heartburn? I'm calling you to check on your brothers from another mother. So, so, so this demonstrates jo the father's love for the brothers from another mother. But, but when the brothers from, and by the way, he, 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 you know, gives Joseph, like, you know, go check on them. He wants to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. But when Joseph gets there, you know the story, right? They're not doing what the father had called them to do. Y'all not, not feeling here. They're not doing what the father had called them to do. And when they see Joseph, they're like, oh, here comes that dreamer. Here comes the one who thinks that, that he's so special because he keeps the father's commandments and he has a spirit of prophecy. So you know what they decide to do? They're like, let's throw him in a pit. Let's get rid of him. Let's separate him from the father. Let's make sure he knows that he is not one of us. Let's get rid of him, and then let's see what becomes of his prophecies. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how Joseph must have felt? Wait a minute. You know, God gave me this prophecy, and now it looks like it's not going to come to pass. I mean, I don't even know what the dream means, but how can this prophecy come to pass when I have been sold into bondage, was Joseph going through a bitter time? Did he go through a bitter time? But you know what kept him? Honey. The word of God to, to him was sure. It was sweet. And beloved, I believe that that's what kept Joseph in his bitter times. You know, have you ever heard anyone laugh at the prophecies we hold as a church? A Sunday law? <laughs> yeah, right. Let's see what becomes of this prophecy now. Can you imagine Joseph maybe doubting in his own mind, did God really speak to me? You know, did I hear right or was I just imagining things? Is this thing real or maybe I'm just, maybe I just heard stuff. Maybe I was just making, maybe I was just wild dreaming. I don't know. But if you can imagine Joseph struggling, then that's the same struggle that many of you may be going through right now. Why am I an Adventist? Yeah, I hear them talking about this stuff that's going to happen in the future. But really, like, I don't see how that can happen. Can you imagine how is Joseph, how is this going to happen when Joseph have been, has been separated from his brothers? Maybe thinking, I'm never going to see them again. Can you imagine that? I'm never going to see them again. So what happens? Joseph is, is, is thrown into jail, and while he is there, God is doing something through him. I don't know if you realize this or not, but God is preparing Joseph for something big. Did you catch that? He's preparing Joseph for something huge. So here's what he does. While Joseph has been separated from his brothers, you're not one of us. You're a cult. I mean, you're crazy. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Does God, do we have brothers from another mother? 
Uh, who is that mother? Yeah. Revelation chapter 17, mystery Babylon, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. God says he has people in those fallen churches. He says, come out of her, my people. But guess what, beloved? Those people are our brothers from another mother. And just as Joseph loved them, but they hated him, guess what our disposition is supposed to be towards them? Not, ha, 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 God loves me better than you, but we need to realize they are our brothers from another mother. And they just don't understand the dream that God has given us that their sheaves, y'all not feeling me, man. <laughs> their sheaves will come. Before God's remnant. And you see, there's a reason why. But before I tell you the reason why, you got to understand, God is preparing Joseph. He's got to make sure that Joseph is the man for the job. So you know what happens with, with jo Joseph while he's separated from his brothers? Number one, he's overcoming a strange woman. Okay. <laughs> he is overcoming a strange woman. Woman, in other words, Joseph is, is, through the power and grace of God, is showing, is overcoming as God desires us to overcome. So he's overcoming strange women, but there's something else he's doing. And this is where, this is where I need you to focus in now, okay? So just like lock everything out and you need to hear this clearly. Joseph has another dream. No, I'm sorry. Pharaoh has a dream. What does he dream? Remember the, the fat cows and the skinny cows and the fat stalks and the skinny stalks, right? And then uh, he doesn't understand the dream. So then the, the, someone tells him, hey, Joseph dreams dreams. So Pharaoh's, Joseph is brought before the Pharaoh, and then Joseph tells the Pharaoh, this is what the dream means. A famine is coming. So Pharaoh's like, what are we going to do? And Joseph says, well, what you need to do is start to gather, gather bread. So while Joseph has been separated from his brothers, he's doing two things. He's overcoming strange woman, and he's gathering bread. Okay, I'll just go ahead and get excited by myself then. He is gathering bread. Wait a minute, pastor. Why is he gathering bread? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Because a famine is coming. And when the famine comes, his brothers from another mother will have one place only that they can go. You guys, you are Joseph. Okay, I will try that again. You, you, you are Joseph. You see, beloved, the Bible says, behold, a famine is coming, not of bread nor of water, but of hearing the word of God. We know a famine is coming. And if we know that a famine is coming, guess what we ought to be doing before the famine hits? You guys, Joseph was not gathering bread for himself. He was gathering bread because he knew a much greater responsibility rested on his shoulders. If I don't gather bread, thousands will die. You see, we look at our salvation and we look at it just as that, our salvation. Why am I studying? For myself. Why am I reading the Bible? For myself, because I'm trying to and I'm trying to. Listen, God has called you because you are the only ones that will be able to reach the brothers from another mother. But how can you reach the brothers from another mother if you're not gathering bread when the time of famine has not yet come? If we are not gathering bread now, listen, when the famine hits, it'll be too late to gather bread. So God says, now is the time. 
Now is the time. He needs us to be gathering bread now. Sweet bread. Honey bread. Bread that will grant heartburn. Because when, when the famine hits, our brothers from another mother are going to be like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. And, and yeah, 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 this doesn't make sense. No, we want the truth. And where can we go to get the truth? And God's going to bring them to us. Can you imagine the brothers coming to Egypt and Joseph like, well, um, let me ask my pastor if there's any bread. <laughs> Many of us have this disposition that I'll let my pastor, you know, the deep stuff and all that, you know, let someone else and, you know, we'll just like, you know, be happy. And you love Jesus? Yeah, great. You're good to go. Beloved, that's not it. I mean, loving Jesus is more than just a verbal confession. I love Jesus. There's more. Loving Jesus is like, it's, it's loving his word. You see, God wants us to, 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 to get into his word because the image of God is revealed in this book. Amen? Jesus Christ is on every page of this book, and Christ is the image of God. And how do we, wh why does Jesus want us to be in the word? Because by beholding, we become changed. So if I want my face to shine with the image and the glory of God, then my face needs to be in this book. My face needs to be in this book. So face, book, face, book, and when, when this becomes my Facebook, God will hit like. So, beloved, God is trying to tell us, listen, you, you need to become like me. And so, what was he doing with Joseph? In order for Joseph to be prepared to give bread, he had to take Joseph through this experience that was just like his. So, Joseph, as, as I said earlier, between two criminals in jail, being put in jail, knowing he, knowing he was innocent, and yet he was put in jail. Joseph went through all these experiences that were a reflection of the very experience of Jesus Christ himself. That's what God's trying to do with us. Because when we start to take this bread and make it our own, beloved, we begin to change into that image. We begin to become his likeness. It is your responsibility to gather bread. Let that sink in for a moment. It is your responsibility to gather bread, not for yourself, but for others who will come seeking it. And when you do that in a selfless way, I'm telling you, you begin to be transformed without even realizing it. God is calling his people to get deeper into the word of God. Like if you were put on trial right now and someone said, explain to me the 2300 day prophecy. Explain to me the state of the dead. Explain to me what happens when Jesus comes again. Would you be able to, on your own, do that? And beloved, that's the elementary stuff. Because heaven, access to heaven is not based on a written exam. Really? You could know these prophecies. You could know the Bible. You could know it backward and forward and still be lost. Because Satan knows the Bible better than many of us. So it's not just a matter of head knowledge. Okay, I know the word of God, so I'm good to go. No, what you see, what you read, what you study must transform and become part of your character. Okay, so uh, does anyone know how uh, honey is made? Do you remember when God rained manna down from heaven? Remember how the children of Israel described the manna? They said it tastes like what? Honey. Honey. The manna tasted like honey. What is the manna symbolic of? The word of God. 
How many of you want to get honey out of the word of God? Okay, let me tell you how you get honey. Just let me see. Anyone here knows how you get honey? Okay, let me tell you. So, honey comes from nectar. Bees, they will go and, you know, pollinate the, the flowers in a certain, at a certain time because a time comes when the flowers die and they can't do their thing with the flowers. So what they do is they will gather nectar. Now, nectar is like 80% water. It's, it's, it's a very uh, diluted form of sugar. So what the bees do is they will take in the nectar, and when they take it in, they, after they take it in, they regurgitate it. I know. Ugh. They regurgitate it, and that process actually evaporates some of the water out of the nectar. Then they'll take it in again, and, then they'll, and they keep doing this. Every time they do it, the nectar, the water in the nectar evaporates until you get honey. So you eat, and then you regurgitate. <laughs> you don't just stop there. You take it in again, and then you regurgitate. And the more you take it in, and re so you eat, and hey, guess what? <laughs> right? And then she's like, oh, oh, oh. and then, you know, you're back and forth. Oh, and, and the more you share, <laughs> the more you share, the more you digest, the more you, guess what you get? Honey. Now, beloved, listen to me. On the surface, it's nectar. And that's what many of us are used to, nectar. The problem is nectar is not a good source of energy. You get weak really quick. And when you get re weak really quick, then you get tired. And when you're tired and you're sitting and listening to a sermon, you're listening to the sermon like this. Amen. <laughs> because you don't have a lot of energy, you know. Nectar. So if you want energy, like energy, energy, you know, like come on, energy. Like, like, you, did you hear this energy? Like, let me go tell someone about this energy. If you want energy, you need honey. But in order to get honey, you have to go below the surface. You take a text and you read that text and then you think, okay, I got it, and you move on. All you've gotten is nectar. God wants us to take that text and eat it over and over and over and over and over until we find the honey. And beloved, let me tell you something. When you start finding honey in the word of God, your heart begins to burn. When you start finding honey in the word of God, you begin to realize your identity, your mission. And when you have a mission and an identity, you're no longer just, oh, I'm, you know, maintaining my church walk. No, 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 no. You have a mission. You know what's coming. And you are moved with a passion that you did not have before. And that is what God is calling. You are Joseph. And the world, they don't know it now but they are depending upon you to be gathering bread for them when they're going to need it. How does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? So, beloved, listen to me. We're going to be covering a lot over these next uh, few days. We're going to be getting, we're going to be um, honey-izing the word of God just made that up but but I'm going I, I, I want to I want you to understand that I believe the time of passively listening to the Word of God like it's it has to be over now like you, we you we've got to come to the place where we say all right enough enough is enough like Lord take me deeper into your word I want a deeper experience with you through your word through the Holy Spirit. I want my face in this book. 
I want to be transformed into your image, into your likeness. Like we cannot keep doing church as usual and expect a different result. Right? You cannot keep thinking, you know what? So I'm a young adult. You know, young adults are not supposed to know the Bible. The old adults are supposed to know the Bible. So we're just going to kind of have our fun now and, you know, just expect. No, no longer settle for nectar. No longer settle for nectar. Demand honey. I want honey, not nectar. I need energy. If I'm going to make it through this thing, I need the pure word of God. So here's my appeal. Um, It's very simple. Lord, I accept my mission as Joseph. You understand what I mean when I say that? I accept my mission. As, I didn't know before. I didn't know, and, and check this out. I was even doubting, like, you know, this doctrine of the investigative judgment and, and, and us as God's remnant end time people. But now you're seeing, look, God gave us the shadow of it in the very story of Joseph. That's not a coincidence. That's not just happenstance. That's, that, that, that's not a, just a chance thing. God is showing you, look, I was thinking of you when this book was written. Can you imagine that? God's saying, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God's saying, I knew you before you were born. God is saying, look, I'm showing you your history. I'm showing you your future in the history of the Bible. And so today you're saying, all right, Lord, I accept my mission as Joseph. I'm going to start gathering bread. I'm going to start taking the word of God more seriously than I've ever taken it before. I am going to start gathering bread so that when that time comes that you send my neighbor to me, that you send my brother from another mother to me, that you, by the way, does the Bible say if your enemy hunger? Do you see what God is doing? He's telling us to prepare bread for our enemies. The very ones that that Satan's going to try to use to persecute God's people, to to denounce your faith. He said, I want you to gather bread for them. Why? Because in doing that, you will be children of your heavenly father. What good is it if you love those that love you? Beloved, imagine that. Now your Bible study is motivated by love for those who hate you. How much closer can you get to the character of Christ than that? Wow. So if that's your desire, you're saying today, Lord, make me a Joseph. Make me a Joseph. Take me through the training. Get my mind to where you need it to be because I want to be used in that way because that is your desire for me. If that's your desire, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet where you are. And I want to have a very special prayer, a consecration prayer, that the Lord will use you for this purpose. Heavenly Father, Lord, your people stand before you today acknowledging you have called us for a very special purpose. Not because you love us more than others, but because you love others, you have called us. Lord, you are sending us to check on your sons. And Lord, though they are brothers from another mother, We love them as you love them. Now, Lord, we're asking. Some of us do not know how to gather honey. We we haven't practiced, but, Lord, we're asking over these next few days and over the next few weeks and months, you will help us to know how to gather bread, to store it up for the time of famine. Teach us, Lord. We stand here before you today giving ourselves to you, Lord, we thank you for your mercy towards us. We thank you, Lord, for your patience with us. Forgive us, Lord, for taking the bread for granted. Now, Lord, use us as our prayer. You see everyone standing here, Lord. You see those who who have made a decision in their hearts. Please, Lord, honor those decisions and grant us the honey. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated.